Today's Shaloners, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. I recently read Carl Lentz's book, Own the Moment. Now, Carl Lentz, if you don't know, is the pastor of Hillsong Community Church. Hillsong has such notable worshipers, Justin Bieber, Kourtney Kardashian, Selena Gomez. It's like the cool church. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm sorry, wait, are we going to talk about Jesus for the next five minutes? Because, Shallon, I didn't think that was like your thing. It isn't. I mean, Jesus is chill, of course. He's great. Cool. But I'm not particularly religious which made his book even more impactful for me. Cause I'm like, wow, there's so much I can take out of this book that has nothing to do with religion at all. There was just a lot of good life lessons that I was reading that could be applied to my life, to your life and to all of our love lives. So I wanted to kind of extrapolate those. So if you don't feel like reading a book with like Ecclesiastes, what are the quotes, verses? I don't even know. I'm here to help. One of the main things Carl says, and he starts the book off talking about your setting. We get stuck in like a default setting. And I think it's so interesting when we look at our lives, everyone has one sector that's just not working. Maybe it's your love life. Maybe it's your body. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's you're constantly butting heads with teachers. Maybe you can't keep friends. You need to look at what your setting is. He had a really good example. He said that recently he moved houses, only like two miles away from his old house, but he would find himself unconsciously just like zoning out and driving to his old place. And he's like, but I turned around. I didn't go back into my old house, sit down with the new family that lived there and demanded they cook me dinner and plop down the couch. That would be crazy. He's like, look at your life. There are things you're doing and you're getting the same result again and again and again. And yet you, we as people, we don't think I need to do something different. We just kind of autopilot and we're like, well, uh, this is, this is just how it turns out. The reason I like giving advice to you guys, like younger people is because you guys want to listen and you want to change girls. My age don't, they want to be yay said. They want to do exactly what they've been doing. And then they want to be completely surprised when they get the exact same result. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. That's Carl's point, And that's my point too. If there is a part of your life that is chronically not working, you need to ask yourself two things. How am I contributing to this? And what am I getting out of these bad results? What emotional payout am I getting? Maybe for example, my, the thing that chronically doesn't work in my life is my body. I don't want anything more than I want to be thin. Like I obsess about, it, I think about it constantly. It's what I want. And what do I do to pursue that? Nothing. Why? Why is that? I try to get down to the root of that a lot. And I realize like I keep myself not fat, but like 10 pounds more than I should be. Because then if I was thin and my life still wasn't perfect, I would be like, I have no one else. I have nothing else to blame. And I would just have to deal with the actual problems in my life. You know what I mean? But instead I choose to be like, I don't know. I've tried everything. I've literally tried nothing. <laughs> You know? And so I need to be like, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to chronically keep getting what I'm getting. And that's Carl's point. The good news is, I mean, the bad news is we are kind of responsible for our own problems in a lot of ways. The good news is we have the power to change that. It's never too late to course correct and be like, I don't live at this house. I don't live at this house anymore. I'm going to get in my car back up and go to where I need to be. Until you do that, nothing's ever going to change. So how do you do that though? Like, ugh, it's just like a bunch of metaphors. This is what you do. You sit down with people you trust. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's your best gay friend, whoever it is and say, this is the problem. I keep, this is the broken part of my life. What do you think I'm doing to contribute to that? I promise you they will have answers and I, they will, they won't be like, let me think. They'll be like this, 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 this. And I guarantee you it's stuff they've probably already told you and not so many words before. You know, because it's hard to watch someone butt their head up against the same wall again and again and again. And we all have friends that do that. We watch it and we are that friend as well, you know? So listen to what people say. It's going to be hard to hear. Have them write it down even, you know, have them go put it in an email. If it's just like, Oh, like I don't want to hear it and read it like paragraph, take one day, read one paragraph, let that sink in, go back, read the second paragraph, let that sink in. And I know it's hard to hear criticism always is, but is it really harder than always driving to that wrong house? You know, you have to, it sucks and it's unfair, but you have to look at how you get yourself where you are, how you got yourself to that old house and how you ended up there is because you just zoned out and you're like, well, this is just what I've always done. This is, I mean, this is just what I do, but why? 
Why? Like I do that with my eating habits. I'm like, but I mean, this is just how I eat. Well, how's that working out for me? Not really well. You know, if you're always single, it's like, well, I mean, who cares? I just ask guys out. How is that working out for you? It's tough to hear because we don't want to think we're the architect of our own misfortune, but a lot of times we are. I'm going to do more uh, own the moment love lessons for you guys because the more I read this book, the more I like it and the more I'm getting from it. And again, see, none of what I was talking about was Jesus-y at all, right? So we can all learn a lesson from people, even if uh, <laughs> they look like they're a singer in Florida Georgia line and yet they're a pastor of a church. Carl, I love you, but your aesthetic, I don't get it. And please stop trying to make Justin Bieber have your aesthetic because he needs Jesus and a great tattoo laser away person. If you guys enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and share. If you have questions of your own, please leave them below in the comment section or slide into my YouTube, YouTube only DMs, and I will answer it. And follow me on Insta, Snap, and Twitter at ShallonXL.